Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you're having a great day so far. So today I'm starting my household binder setup. So I have two binders here. One is my business binder, which is pretty much already set up. Um, and then I am starting my household reference binder and I have been loving making these binders. It's so fun and it's super functional. So basically the idea behind this is to have a couple binders, several binders for different areas of my life where I might need to reference certain information and and since I'm always making the same lists over and over again, I felt like it would be really helpful to make them once, print them out, make them look nice, and then stick them in a binder that I can reference for the foreseeable future. So I have two binders here from Karsten's. They're actually from Amazon. And I love the colors that these come in. So I got a couple different colors. And I got one of the one inch binders, that's for my business binder. And then for my household binder, I decided to go with a one and a half inch binder. These are three ring binders and they are letter size. So they fit your regular letter size, eight and a half by 11 paper. And they're super durable and I love the colors that they come in. There's so many good colors. You can do neutrals or they have other colors like pinks and blues and greens, but really good quality overall. So for my household binder, I'm gonna be making a few minor changes from the first binder that I created. The biggest one being I'm not gonna be using these side tab dividers that you see here. I do love the quality. I love the way that they look when the binder is open. The only thing is that when you close it, there's not enough room for the specific binder for the tabs to be hidden by the binder. They stick out and it really kind of bothers me. It's not enough where I would throw these tabs away and not use them. This is supposed to be functional, so I'm keeping them in here when the binder is open. It looks really nice and I like having these tabbed sections, especially for my business binder. But for the household binder that I'm creating, I'm deciding to not do these side tabs. Instead, I'm gonna do some DIY top tabs using my page flags. And I think it's gonna look really nice and it's still gonna give me the tabs, um, but just in a little bit of a different way. I love the dark brown color of this binder. I think it looks so nice and crisp, especially with that white paper. But I just went ahead and made a cover sheet just to kind of have something to open up to when I do open up the binder, just as a little cover page. And then I already have a few things in here. And the whole idea with this household binder is to have a place to put all of my lists or things that I wanna reference. So for example, in here right now, I have my birth chart and it's not something that necessarily goes with the household. So I think this is gonna be more of a household slash personal slash just me binder of things that I wanna reference because I doubt my boyfriend is gonna be using this binder. It's probably just gonna be me. So I made a bunch of different lists that I make on a regular basis. And instead of making those lists over and over and over again, I just went onto Canva, made my own versions and then printed them out and I'm gonna stick them in some page protectors. That way I can always reference them without having to rewrite the same list over and over and over again and I also wanted to have a place to put things that I just want to reference so for example my birth chart I've printed it out multiple times and over the years I've either thrown it away or lost it or just misplaced it so I've had to reprint it a few times and I tried to look for it the other day and I couldn't find it so I decided okay I'm just gonna print it put it in some page protectors, I'll put it in my binder towards the back and that way I know where to find it. But if you wanna try making one of these binders, you can put whatever you want in there. I'm still kind of deciding everything that's gonna go in here. So for now, I'm thinking it's going to be my cleaning lists, chore lists, seasonal things, anything that I need to note about our apartment, important contact information like maintenance, emergency numbers, just general numbers and information that I need for different places in my area. So anyways, I went ahead and added those pages into my page protectors, which I got on Amazon. And now I'm gonna make a couple of labels. So I want to label the two sections that I have in here for now. Now, which are household and personal so in the household I have like my cleaning list and tasks and then in personal I'm having some health related things and some goals that I've set for myself just so I kind of have a place to put them 
I'm thinking of putting my dog's information in here too. They have so much paperwork though. I feel like they deserve their own binder just with all of their vet records and everything that I've already gathered for both of them. It's kind of a lot. So I'm deciding whether or not to add that to this binder, but for now it's just going to be household and personal. So I'm making two labels, printing them out on my brother P Touch. A label maker. I believe you can get this on Amazon. I got mine from Office Depot, but I believe it is linked in my storefront and I'll have a link for it down below. So I'm just printing those out and I'm going to cut them down a little bit just so they fit better on the task tab. And then I'll go ahead and label the two sections. So then I'll just label the page flags and then I'll stick it towards the top of the page protector just so it peeks out a little bit so you can see it as a divider. And then to secure it, I'm just gonna take another page flag and put it on the back side. And that's all I'm gonna do for now. And I only have two tabs. I might get some top tabs in the future, but for now, I really like the way this looks. I love the color of these page flags with the binder and the white paper. I think it looks really nice and it kind of matches all of my other stationery. So I have a few things in here to start. So number one is my weekly task list. This is basically a list of everything that I clean on a weekly basis, everything from kitchen, bedroom, dogs, patio, loft, um, office, living room, everything that I try to clean on a weekly or daily basis. I have it all listed out right here for reference. And then after that, I printed out a June calendar and I'm not sure if I'm going to use this. I only printed June and July. So if I don't end up using it, I'll just remove these and put something else here. But I really liked this calendar layout and I thought I might use it for like kind of pre-planning how I'm gonna do my week, like which days are gonna be errand days or grocery shopping days or cleaning days. But I also think this is a great way to have a shared calendar. I know not everyone likes to share their digital calendar, um, but you can share your calendar with your household and have everything in one place, which can be really helpful, especially in a multi-generational household. If grandparents or parents are picking up kids and trying to sync bus schedules and camp schedules, it can be really helpful to just have one place to go for your calendar. After that, I have a household inventory list. So I just made this on Canva and this is pretty much everything that we need to restock in our household. So I kind of divided them up into different sections. I have a kitchen, bathroom, and then on the back side, I have dogs and laundry slash miscellaneous and this is basically just a list of things that we need to restock so things like paper towel dish soap um cleaners things for the shower things for our dogs like food and treats and just extra things that we need to restock on but not necessarily grocery items that would go on a grocery list this is usually a separate trip to like sam's club or something because i really like to have multiples like paper towel toothpaste i like to have a little stockpile so we go to like those big box like wholesale stores and get those things in bulk I love doing that, so I just wanted to make a little inventory list for that. After that, I have a health plan. This is my personal section, and this is just kind of some guidelines of what I want to focus on for my health and wellness and just my overall goals, habits, routines, and things like that. So I have a few different kind of like inserts that I made for myself just to kind of help remind me of my goals and keep them at the forefront. I always make these lists and then I end up losing them, so now I have them in a place where I know where to find them. I also have a vitamin and mineral chart that I wanted to print and put in here because again, that's another thing that I research all of the time. I always research what vitamins I need and what types of food I can get them in and then I always end up losing it. So I have that in here. And then after that, I have a monthly guide, which I'm actually probably gonna put in my household section. And I think what I'm gonna do with this, instead of using those monthly like June and July calendars, I think I'll just make a master monthly guide for my cleaning schedule. So I'll kind of separate out each week and decide which weeks of the month that I'm gonna do different cleaning. I might do all of the floors and like windows and things on the first week of the month. The second week might be like bedding and laundry just to kind of give myself a break and so I'm not worried about doing all of it at once. I can kind of separate it out and stick to a schedule. So I think that's what I'm going to use this for. It'll probably end up back in my household section. I have another vitamin and mineral table here just because that's something that I always want to have. So I have a couple different versions with some different information. And then I also have my birth chart back here. Again, this is just kind of something that I would reference and I want to know where it is. 
a lot of times I want to reference it while I'm journaling. I might want to know about a certain planet or an alignment or something. So I just like to have it somewhere and now hopefully I won't accidentally throw it away. It has its own place and it'll be in this binder if I need it. But this is definitely a project you do over a period of time and keep building on. This is not something that you're gonna get done in a week or a day. This is something that you can start doing now and build it up to be something that has all of the information that you'll need for your household in a year or two years time and you can continue adding to it and updating it as things change in your life. So I will leave links for everything down below. The binders and the page protectors are from Amazon, super easy to order and they have so many nice colors everything else you can just print your own reference information right off the computer or if you have specific documents that you get in the mail or anything like that that you want to include super easy to just throw it in a page protector and pop it in your binder so i hope you enjoyed this video i will definitely keep working on this and share any updates have a wonderful rest of your day and before you go i just want to thank skillshare for sponsoring this video i love exploring on skillshare i've made it part of my weekly routine to log on and browse some of the topics that I find most interesting. I like browsing Skillshare both for personal use and for professional use. There are so many great topics and some of the classes even have activities, projects, and certificates that you can earn after completing the classes. No matter what profession or career field you're in, communication is always one of the top best skills that you can have and I found this learning path that I found to be really helpful. So the first class is all about effective communication and this class is taught by Claire Liu who is a CEO and she gives you five best practices for remote teams and some really good communication skills and things that you can put into practice both at work and even in your personal life. The second class is Communication Framework for Inclusive Company Cultures. The next class is Give and Receive Effective Feedback. Next is Building Trust with Your Boss. And finally, the last class in this learning path is Persuade Through Presentations. And I found this to be really helpful if you are a visual storyteller. This gives you some really good tips to make your point and communicate more effectively. But there's so much more to explore on Skillshare and the first 1,000 people to join with the link down below. We'll get a free one month trial so you can explore Skillshare premium classes and learning paths.